Welcome back to another video of AWS uh, tutorial and today we are going to look to Capstone a project. Now this project is basically the last step you need to do in the solution architect class and it is a very important project to practice your skills and what you have learned in the previous uh, classes and labs including the guided and the challenge lab. Now if you haven't really saw the videos for the challenge and the guided lab, I advise you to go back and see them. Because this project requires you to have a good understanding of the AWS cloud and the services that we have. So what is basically this project about? We want to deploy a PHP application and you will create an RDS basically to speak with the PHP application and we want to update an AWS system manager parameter store and we want to secure the application to prevent public access to the backend. So this is what we are giving as a starting point. We have a VPC with four subnets, two public and two private subnets and we have a bastion host which basically allow us to create an SSH session to the EC2 instances that we will have here. So the lab is also giving us an asset that we need to download to our computer and later on we will use them to deploy the PHP application and to import the data to the RDS. Now most importantly how you can basically provide access to the data is going to be or how you can import data is going to be uh, done in different method. There is a very easy method and there is a method that I prefer which will teach you a lot how to deal with AWS services and this is what I'm going to explain in this video. So we'll go to AWS and this is what I will create. I will go to AWS and Basically, what I want to create in this project or to finish this project successfully, I want to create the following diagram. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a Cloud9 IDE and I will be able to access the Cloud9 IDE and I will get the project assets here in the Cloud9 and then I will use that Cloud9 to deploy the PHP application, test it, see what it is application, what this application all about. And then I will access the Cloud9 to import the data to the RDS here in my private subnet. And then I will create an application load balancer, an auto scaler, and then I will launch the private EC2 instances using the template that was given to the lab. Before doing anything, let us go and inspect the environment of this project. You can find we have a VPC called example VPC. We have a subnet in that VPC. So let me now just sort them. We have example VPC and in it we have the public subnet one, public subnet two, and the private subnet one. Now, just to start things in the right way, let me take a note of this uh, public subnet in the notepad that I have here. So let me just create a note of the subnet ID. So let me copy the subnet ID. So this is the private subnet one ID. And I advise you as well, while you are working on this project, is to keep the same. So basically, this is a private subnet to ID. And this is, will help you when you create an RDS subnet group. So you can use this subnet as a reference. The next thing is going to be for me is to look to the security group and you will find in the security group we have an inventory app which open uh, port 80 and port 443 only from this security group and if you select that security group you will find that this is basically the ALB security group which is this one. 
So we are allowing traffic to come only from the load balancer to the inventory app. And we have a bastion host security group, which will allow us to access the bastion host. And from the bastion host, you can access all the EC2 instances that you will launch in the private uh, instances. And we have a DB security group where we only enable the inventory application to access the DB group. Now, later on, I might just modify this to use a Cloud9. I will modify it a little bit to allow Cloud9 to speak with the DB, import the data, and then I will close that connection. So let us now start with the first thing. I will do a Cloud9, and I will create an ID. So let us now create a Cloud9, and I will call this project IDE. Click Next. Now, this is going to be an EC2 instance, T2 Micro. It will be Amazon Linux 2. And then the network setting, I want to launch this in the example VPC. And the reason why I'm using Cloud9 is to teach you a lot how you can use and employ the AWS services to finish uh, the migration of the new project, of the new architecture very quickly. And now click on Next. So I launched the Cloud9 in the project VPC and in the public subnet, and now I need to create the Cloud9. Now this is, will take a few minutes to be ready. So we need to wait for it. And now let us go to the project and look to the project files. We have a SQL dump file and we have the PHP file itself. So if you do right click and basically copy link address, you are going to get the project PHP file. Now let me save this here. And this is the PHP code I want. And this is the link that I want to use here. So what I'm going to do now is basically to download that project code in my Cloud9 environment and there I will basically install a PHP, MySQL, deploy the application to see, and later on you could use this as a starting point for you to practice more and to be um, well prepared for the exam. So my Cloud9 is ready. Now I will put a simple command, wget, and paste the link I just copied, and this is will download an example.zip file here. Me. So I'm going to click next, click enter, and now you will find that this example.zip is there. Now before I move further, I want to install the basically the, um, uh, the tools that I'm going to use, which is the Lambda stack. We did many of these in the labs. However, you could basically install them, look to the AWS documentation and look for installing Lambda stack on AWS Linux machine, because I use my Cloud9 as a Linux machine, you are going to get a nice tutorial that you can use. So I'm going to copy that. As I said, there is a very easy way to do the project. There is a very small, fast way to do it. And there is the way that you can basically build more skills uh, to use different AWS services and build the project in the right way. And by saying the right way, I refer here to uh, having an IDE environment, connect everything, configure everything from that IDE, and then go back to basically to your project code and uh, uh, use the private instances to speak with the load balance. So these are the steps that you can use to install a LAMP server in the Cloud9. So I'm going just to copy those commands here. So the first thing I need to do is to put sudo yum update, which is update all the packages that we have. Then I'm going to install the Amazon Linux extras and the MariaDB. And then I will install
Now, the next thing, I'm going to install the HTTPD, which is the Apache server, the MariaDB server as well. And I will start I will start the HTTPD server and I will leave all these codes in the description of the video in GitHub just in case if you want to check the tips that I do in this video. And now I want to enable the HTTPD, which basically once we restart Cloud9, we can find this HTTPD server is open. Now, if you go back to your uh, services, so if you go back to AWS again, and you go to the EC2, you will find that the Cloud9 created an EC2 instance here, and there is a security group for that Cloud9. What I want to do in this security group is to open port 80, because I'm going to test now that Cloud9 can deploy the PHP application, and this will be anywhere and said. Now, let me open a Cloud9 in a new tab. And I will go back to the IDE. Now, the next step is similar to what we did in the previous lab. In most of the lab we did before, we have like a demo application that we need to um, install in an EC2 instance. And we will use that basically as a starting point. Now, what I'm going to do now is to unzip the folder, the example.zip, to the folder of the var www.html. That HTML folder is the folder where I want to put my code. Now, if you put the unzip without sudo, you are going to get a command error. So I'm going to go sudo unzip example.zip minus d, which is the destination folder, is going to be var www slash html now if you go to the cloud9 and you get the public ip of the cloud9 from here this is will go and open and you tap for us and this tab is going to show us the website which is the example social research organization so if you do a query now and you submit the query you will find like there is no data and the reason why we don't have any data because we don't have an rds so let me now go and create an rds now the rds configuration are going to be very simple it will be a multi az deployment master and the standby RDS in two AZs, just in case if the first AZ is down or the master node, the standby node will be a primary node. And the configuration here, we need to pay attention. We need to have a dev test or a free tier. And this is, will be a multi-AZ deployment. Now for database identifier, I'm going to put this uh, parameter here in the notebook and I will share it with you guys. I will put it example. I will keep the admin master username as it is, and I will use the lab dash password, which is the one we used in the past. And then I will use a T3 micro with allocated storage at 20, and we want to enable a storage auto scaling and we want to launch this on an example VPC, but I forget to create a new DB subnet group. What I do? Very easy. Go back to RDS. And now, and this is where most students like find these labs really difficult because they panic. They don't focus on the steps and let us now create a subnet group. Once you create a, a subnet group, I will call this example DB subnet group. 
And in the description, I'll do the same. Example, submit a group. Just call this example DB. Where I want to create this submit group, I want it to be an example VPC in the first availability zone and the second availability zone. Why I select those two zones only? Because for a simple reason. If you go back to your VPC, open it in a new tab, I just want to show you the reason behind that, and you go to your subnet, you will find that these private subnet where I want to launch are in US East 1A and 1B. Now take a note of the IP address or the subnet ID because now in the next step you are going to select which subnet you want to use. So go back here, select the subnet. I'm going to select the subnet, this one and this one. How I know? Because these are the IDs I just copied in the previous step. So I can link them here. So now I will select those two subnets and then create a subnet group. Now go back to your RDS. You will be able now to refresh this page here from this icon and you will find that example DB submit group is there available. In security group, also we have an existing security group. So you need to make sure to de select the default one and choose the example DB. Now, one last thing before I carry on, if you go back to the example DP security group, that example DB security group is only allowing a traffic to be accepted from the inventory app. I want my Cloud9 project to be able to access the DB here. So I want to edit and add and this is will be a MySQL port. So I'm just saying that the Cloud9, I want the Cloud9 to access the RDS. And I will select the AWS Cloud9 project and then I click on save. It's a standard create MySQL, dev and test, multi AZ, the identifier is example, admin, lab dash password here. It's T3 micro, and then I choose the example VPC, and then I choose the existing uh, security group for the DB. In the additional configuration, sometimes you need to check that this port is correct, which is the right port. And now I want to give this DB a name. Now, if you go back to the project, they are saying that this DB is going to be example DB in the project description. So let us now put the DB initial database name is going to be example DB. And you can use any name. If you use any name, when you import the data, just to specify the database name, and this is will do the work. And enhanced monitoring, we want to disable it and then click on create database. Now this will create a database and this is will take a um, long time to finish. So what I'm going to do now, while the database is in a creation, I'm going to go back to my project, copy the link of my SQL, copy link, go back to my IDE here, and then I want to get the SQL file into the Cloud9. And this is basically the file that I just imported, which is the country, country data dump.sql. Now, once my RDS is ready, I need to get the connection endpoint and I will import it. Now, before I connect to the RDS, we maybe now need to go and prepare a few things for us. So let us wait for the RDS here to be created, and let me show you two things. First, what we need to do. We need to go back to our EC2, and if you look to my architecture diagram, I'm going to create an 
load balancer for the application and I will launch two EC2 instances here in the private subnet and those EC2 instances I will be able to access them from my bastion host. So basically you could also import the data to your RDS by accessing the bastion host and from the bastion host you access the EC2 web server here and then you do the import and you will be done. And that's the easiest way to do this a project. And I will show you both methods so you can basically adapt the method that you like. So we go to load balancer and we create an application load balancer. I'm going to call this app ALB. I want to launch this in the example VPC in the two availability zone that we have. Now make sure to have public subnet one and public subnet two selected because my application load balancer will be an internet facing accepting traffic from the internet and forward this traffic to my EC2 instances on the private subnet. Now my security group deselect the default and select the ALB security group, which basically it's going to forward port uh, traffic at port 80 to the target group here, but we don't have target group. What we do, click here in a create target group, select instances, example VPC, and I will call this group, my app a group. Select next, and now create a target group. Go back to your load balancer, refresh the page, and you will find that app group is available here, and then I will create a load balancer. If you pay attention, there is also a launch template provided to us by the lab. So that launch template, it contains the PHP application. So in different words, you don't need to create any cloud IDE. You don't need to create an extra EC2. All you need to do to basically launch this whether in a public or a private subnet and you access it from whether Bastion host or directly and basically deploy the application and load the or import the data to the RDS. So what I'm going to do next is to create an auto scaling group. So we'll create an auto scaling and I will call this app auto scale. And this will be using the example LT launch template, click next. This will be an example VPC and my, I need to launch my web server here on the private subnet. And look here to this inventory role, which is already embedded in this. And that inventory role is going to be basically allow the any EC2 created by the autoscaler to access the RDS. So we're going to select example VPC and they want them to be launched in a private subnet one and the private subnet two. Click next. Attach to an existing load balancer and we have a load balancer which I just create. Make sure the health check is also getting a health check from the ALB, click next. And the desired capacity, I will choose two minimum two and maximum let's say four i don't want to track the scaling policy if you want to do so you can to do that but it's not required for this project um, however if you create a target scaling group it's going to give you an error but if you are using um, a root account to do this lab you can also create a target group and then click next click next and for my tags, I'm going to put name and I will call them web server. Click next. And then in the last step here, I want to create an auto scaling a group. You can see there is a tag value. You cannot have a training spaces. Now the tag value for the name, maybe I have an extra space at the end. As you can see, I need just to delete it and click next and then create an auto scaling a group. Now this is will start to update the capacity. You could go to the activity and basically you can look to the, the creation of the EC2. Now at this stage, 
I must have now my RDS ready. So I go back to my RDS and refresh the page to see if my RDS is ready. If it is ready, now I could start importing the data to it and basically connect to it and uh, link it with my application server. As you can see now, the endpoint is ready. So let me now take a note of that. So my endpoint is there. Now you could also check the configuration that you did from here. This is your security group. These are the subnet. These are the VPC, especially the configuration. Most of the students, they forget which DB name they assign during the creation. So at any stage, you could come back to the configuration and check the DB name. It is the right name that you are looking for, or you copy it from here which username also sometimes students put roots sometimes they put their names so you need to just go back and see them now what we need to do is to go back to cloud9 and i just want to connect to my sql now the generic format for this connection if you recall what we did in lab 5 is my sql minus u admin the name of the user minus p so if you have different username for the rds you need to change this and the rds endpoint so basically this is my rds endpoint so the command will be my sql let me copy this in a new line and i'll show you the full command how it will look like and now copy the whole thing come to cloud9 and paste it and you will be able to connect lab dash password and as you can see now, I could do show data phases. And I will find that the example DB that I just created is there. And it is an empty DB. I don't have anything inside it. So I could go and now show tables. So it is empty. Now, before I import the data, let me show you the second step, which is the easiest one ever. How we can get exactly to the project without really doing a lot of installation, just easy, in a very easy way, we are going to connect to the private instances that I have via my passion host. So my web servers here are ready. And you can see those are created by the autoscaler. And they have this role, which is the inventory app role. This is the role that will allow this EC2 to read the parameter from the system manager. So let us now import the data and it use the Vocarium key. And this is what I will do. I will go to the project details and download the pem file i'm having mac if you have windows you need to download ppk file and you would use the software potty so in this step now i'm going to show you how to connect to the bastion host from your local computer and this is what we need to do first we need to go to the download folder or to the folder where you download the pem file and then you need to change the permission to 400 and the name of the file is lab user as you can see here in this screen and now ssh minus i labs user and then ec2 dash user at the ip address of the passion host which is the public ip go back paste it and connect you will be able to connect to the passion host now the problem here we need to do access the private instances this web server or this web server from the bastion host. So what we need to do, if you put this IP here and you try to connect using EC2 user like this at this IP, it won't work. It will give you a rejection. So what you need to do, you configure SSH, SSH pass it through, similar to what we did in lab six. So if you never did that lab go back and do it first and then come back to the project if you are using windows 
you are going to use the PA agent. If you are using Mac, you can do it from the terminal. And this is what I will do. I will put the command SSH minus add and minus K and the labs user the pen file. I will add it to my identity. And now when I connect to my bastion host using this command here, I don't need to pass the name of the pen file because I already save it in my SSH session. So I just connect to it directly. Now, if I need to connect to my bastion host with SSH pass it through activated, I need to put this command minus A EC2 user and the public IP address of my bastion host at the public IP address. And now I am putting my PIM file in the session of the SSH to pass it through, go to the bastion host, and I will use that IP. I will use that PIM file to basically connect to my private instances. So if I go now and do SSH EC2 user at private IP address, I will be able to connect successfully. So this is a very easy way to access, and you can find Actually, AWS Academy provides you with the country data dump file already in this machine, so you don't need to get the link or to download it. It's all there. So as you can see in the private EC2 instance, in this EC2 instance in the web server that we just create with the autoscaler, we find that the country data dump file is already there. And what we need to do now is just to import it to our system. Now, the generic format for this command is going to be similar to what we did in the previous lab. So we are going to replace now the data point for our example RDS with this endpoint. And then from the private EC2 instance, like make sure you are in the private EC2 instance. And as you can see here, and now we want to basically import the data to the RDS. So we put lab-password. And as you can see now, I could go back and connect to this database using the command of the previous step and put lab-password. And now you can show tables because I am already now connected to the example DB directly. And then I could select just to verify that the data is there. Select a star from the country data final, which will basically give us uh, data in the system. Now, in the same way, you could do that from here in a cloud nine. So you could basically connect to the RDS or import the data because I have the data already here, but I just show you the best and the fast way to do this project. And now if you do show data base, you will find that the example DB is there. You can use it. And now we can select as well from that example uh, database, we can select the data that we want from the table that we have, which is, I think it's called, let us show table first, just to show you guys. I know if this is like repeating the whole thing again, but it's okay for us to learn. And this is the table that I want to select from. So just to check that I have data in it. Exit and all good. Now at this step, I managed to import the data to the RDS. So my RDS is there and you can see the RDS is containing a multi-AZ. So I have now two instances for this RDS running, uh, there is one master and there is another replica 
in US East 1B. Now I need to test that I can access the load balancer. So go to the load balancer and copy the public DNS name and paste it here in a new tab. And you can see I can access the application most importantly now. I need to be able to get the data from the RDS. But why I can't get the data? Go back to the project and review the readme file. There is a system parameters that we need to set up, which are the following. We need to create those in order for your application load balancer to work with the RDS. So let me go now to uh, the RDS. And if you recall what we have done in the diagram, we said that this role is going to give the web server a permission to read the parameter store, the variable from the parameter store to access the RDS. So our PHP application need those parameters. However, if you look to the project itself, the one you download to your computer here to the cloud nine, if you look to the PHP code, you will find that this PHP code is telling you that these parameters are going to be used. So let me just quickly show you that so you can better understand what we are doing here. Let me just quickly unzip the example.zip file and I will show you what we mean by that. Clear, unzip. And if you look here into the get parameter, this PHP code is going to the system manager to get those endpoints. So let me just now copy them. In my text editor and I will construct them. So I will just have them ready for me when I need to configure them in the system manager. And then the next thing is going to be the username. In our case is admin. If you forget what's username, it will be here, guys, in the configuration. That's the username. And now the next thing we need to have is the password. And we use the lab dash password, the one we always use, lab dash password. And the last thing I need to have is the name of the database. Again, if you forget what we did, Go back to the RDS and this is your DB name. You can just copy it from here and put them all together. Now where we need to configure those in the system manager. So we need to go to system manager. And from the system manager, we will select the parameter store. And we will create a parameter. The first one, go back to the sheet that we have, endpoint, and our endpoint is going to be a text, and the value of it is going to be the endpoint of our RDS. Click create, create another one, and this time we need for the username, and this is will be admin. Click on a create, then create a third one for the password, and this will be the lab dash password, and then a create, and we need to configure the database, so the example dash database here, and this is will be the example db. And create. Now go back to your application load balancer. Now this is the machine of my IDE. You could also try to give that role to the IDE to the cloud nine. Doing this uh, project from a root account, what you need to do is just to give uh, the app role using this tool here to give the Cloud9 the app role, and this is will enable the Cloud9 to get the system parameters and uh, uh, get the data from the RDS. 
However, in our case, we want our load balancer to be able to retrieve the data. So we need to refresh. And now you can see I have the data successfully loaded. And this is pretty much what we need to do for this project. Thank you for seeing this video and see you in the next one.